we get it any bigger? Well, that's it. No? Okay. So we're talking about a verse in 1 Peter 3.15. Maybe it could go up and change the slides. Thank you. And Peter in 1 Peter is writing a letter to believers who are scattered throughout Asia Minor. And that's the now Turkey. Okay, so these believers are scattered throughout the region of Turkey in Anatolia. And um, they are struggling to follow Jesus in, in a place of where there's a tough, godless city. Go to the next slide. <laughs> okay. And Peter's writing to them and he says this verse. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give reason for the hope that you have. Okay? And Peter is quite a qualified person to say this because Peter actually had some challenges with this where he was asked if he knew Jesus um, at a time when people were interested in Jesus and it was a tough time when Jesus was being taken away. And um, they said... Uh, What's going on with this? You know, they said to Peter, you, you know this man? And he went, no, no, I don't, I don't know him. And he said again, no, I, I saw you with him. And he said, oh, no, I'm mistaken. I don't know him. And, I was, and then he denied Jesus three times before the cock crowed that morning. And um, he, he wasn't prepared for that. He wasn't prepared for the situation that happened to him. And so he, he just denied it. So it's interesting that Peter is the person who writes this to um, the believers. He says, In your hearts, revere Christ as Lord, and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. So we are going to be a, what was our vision? We are going to be a soul winning, supernatural, disciple making community on the earth. So, did you know, and I'm sure that you did, that we are God's plan to tell people about Him? We are the community, you know, along with other communities around here, of God on the earth. And God has no other plan. Okay? We're it. Plan A. It's pretty amazing. Like, look around at each other. Look at the person next to you and go, you are God's plan for the earth. You. Okay, it's bizarre. You're God's plans, Jeffy. And, like, we're not, we're not flesh people. We're not anything amazing, okay? But God has chosen us. That's his plan. Now, none of us can say we've got anything to boast about. And God... It says the Bible says God says He uses the oh, what's the term the we can, we can the foolish, foolish things yeah. of the world to confound the wise. Okay, the truth come come through us, not because of us, but because of the truth. Yeah. Okay, and that's what that verse means. So there was one other thing I wanted to remind you of that I really loved that relates to this, and it was the three chairs to your call. So when you're called. Um, Jesus calls you some point in your life. It happens to everybody, hopefully, if we tell enough people. Um, you get to choose whether you're going to follow him or not. I remember once I was leading a new Christian group and a man, I, you know, explained the gospel to him and he said, oh, I, I understand what you're saying to me, but at this point in my life, I don't want to live how God wants me to live. I want to just live my own way, so I'm not going to become a Christian right now. And that was his decision, you know. God gives us all free choice. So in the beginning, when he put us in the garden, he gave us free choice. And every day we have a choice to choose what we're going to do with the day. So when we get called to live for God, and it's very exciting, it's very challenging, um, Remember this guy said there's three calls that you're called to. I wonder, can anyone remember? I, I remember these because they really were good to me. And he had three chairs. Were you here? Yeah. yeah. What was the first chair you sat in? Just a 
To be with God, to be a son or daughter of God. That's the biggie. You never have to forget that. That to sit in his presence and be a daughter of the living God. That was the thing I remember when I got her first heard that the God who made everything um, cared about me, little insignificant speck in the ocean me, was just lost in a sea of Western Sydney. This lost little kid didn't even fit into my family. And I heard at scripture that God <coughs> cared about me, loved me, and called me to be his child. That's the first chair. That is amazing. And that's, we can't forget that one. And in that, we're called to be a whole bunch of other stuff we've talked about, being more than conquerors, okay? Being overcomers. We're, we're joint heirs with Christ. We're children of the King. We're, we're victorious, victorious in him. We're all these things that the devil tells us that we're not, but we are. And, and then we have to live out a life either believing every day, you know, what, what people, have, the lies people have told us about who we are or what God has said about who we are. Because of Jesus, love that. The second chair was to do with the kingdom. Anyone remember? The second chair, apart from being a son or daughter of God, were also called within this kingdom to serve God in a way within this kingdom that is unique. Mm. And no one else can do it. Yeah. Okay? Because no one else is you. Mm, that's right. And you have the gifts that God has given you. Yeah. That's the second call. And then the third call, which I get very excited about, is... Anyone remember what the third call is? Yes. Okay. It's ministry outside the church. So it's a specific way you, you are called to show the kingdom to others, to show what the kingdom is like to other people. Now, this is, this is easier because we have each other. And, um, you know, Matthew says, this is how everyone will know that you are my followers, that you love one another. So when we have Working Bee and we can invite other people, when we have Christmas in July and we can invite other people, other people get to see mm. the love that we have for each other. Yeah. And um, I remember when I used to visit other churches with a worship team, we used to go and teach them about music and stuff. People used to say, you, you guys really love each other. Like the closeness that you have is really amazing and, and it actually you know, demonstrated something to them. And, and that's really great. So that's the one we're talking about today. Oh, yeah. Um, interesting, watching the video, it's, it's very American, you know, and there's, you say, oh, you don't go to church. You know, church is something in America that is very popular and very big part of the culture, whereas here in Australia, it's not. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm really tongue-tied when people ask me, about you know giving a reason for the hope that I have and, and sometimes I'm unprepared I'll be honest now <clears throat> this sermon that I'm talking about came from a, a personal experience that I had I was with Fern and we were at the Swan Fest and we'd set up our artwork you know and I was thinking about that and I was doing all this stuff and I met I met a lady that is often involved in these community events that a lot often involved in carols and I was talking to her and she did look a bit tired and she said to me something that surprised me, shocked me actually, she said to me, you, whenever I see you and Lance, you are always so happy. Like, what is it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really stunned because one, I am not always happy. If, who knows me? I am not always happy, okay? I'm not. Um, if Steve Way was here, he could absolutely concur. But you always have his presence back here. But I do. What I don't realise is deep down there is a joy. There is a joy. Even when I'm losing my dad when he's going to be with Jesus. Even when I can never have kids. I just can't. Even when, you know, stuff doesn't go how we think it might go or how we want it to go, I still know that I am a daughter of the living King. Mm. And it 
It surprised me, but it shows. It shows to people. And so, this is why Pete says, Pete. 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 Wrong person. The Apostle Peter, who was standing at the gates of heaven, says, You say, Hey, Kaz. <laughs> when you meet you. Hey, Kaz. <laughs> you going? You probably will. <laughs> so I've been, I looked up actually recently who, who says that Peter will stand at the gates well it doesn't actually say that in the Bible anywhere mm. but it, it, I think it says he gives him the keys of the kingdom and that's why people yeah. think that and the pearly gates I looked that up and it says the gates <coughs> there's 12 gates around heaven and that some gates are made of single pearls yeah. and that's where that comes from really interesting when you go <laughs> back to how much stuff in our culture is actually from the word of God mm. from the truth anyway so we're going to show people what the kingdom is like. So what is the kingdom like? Now this sounds bizarre, but when you when you come to logically think, well, I've got to be prepared to give, you know, and talk about this when people ask me because that day, that was a God appointment that day and I missed it, right? I missed it. I was unprepared. Now what I will do is make sure I follow it up with that lady but it was there was a person genuinely asking so when we're in the kingdom one of the things about Jesus that was spoken about a lot when I was a kid was that Jesus was a complete rebel okay he went way against the world and the way things operated he spoke to women when he wasn't supposed to he spoke to Samaritans when he was a Jew he 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 just went completely opposite to the world as it was and the world as it was was the old testament jewish law okay and he went totally against that so sometimes when we read the old testament we've got to remember the old testament is a whole big long example of the fall and then how not to live basically it's a whole episode of stuffing things up and then jesus coming and going enough the laws are gone. now we live like this Okay, now we, we live how we, we're meant to. So you can put the first dot. I thought I'd have a dot of thing. So no, very different. Very, 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 very different. Our community on the earth is very different to what people normally see. Okay? And sometimes we forget this, but it's really true. Um, and the next dot, to repent. You know where it says um, in the Bible they repented and, and they turned to Christ? That, that word in the Greek, repent, has the connotation of literally you're going one way with the crowd and you literally turn completely around and walk in a completely different direction. So that's what the kingdom, our kingdom is like. We, we're not competitive. We, we love each other. We support each other. We bear one another's burdens. You know, we live this way that God has given us that really... Sometimes you have to convince yourself that people are even interested in that, but they are. It's, you know, and, and, and here's the other great thing as a son or daughter of God. We don't have to get on the box and be a super preacher. That's not what we're called to. All we have to do is be ready, be prepared to give an answer when people ask you. That's it. It's not even hard. I mean, it can be challenging, but anyway. <laughs> And I want to talk about the state of the world versus the <coughs> kingdom community. And this is the next dot that we often struggle with. And there's genuine grief in that. I, I, I have days where I just don't want to watch the news. Seriously. Like we have had in this country a whole, a couple of decades of really cruisy living. We, we cruise through the global financial crisis compared to the rest of the world because we were on a commodities boom. You know, we have it good here. If you're on the dole here, you have got a roof over your head and a really good lifestyle compared to most people on the planet. Most people on the planet. That's a shock. A third of the world lives in China and there's a big chunk in India. You know, and if you look at the Arab Springs and the wars and the tragedies and the people shooting people in America and the mess the world is in, a lot of people have this question, if there is a God, why is there so much suffering? in the world and i'll tell you why you've got an answer for it because the world is lost the world is mucked up and it went back to 
disobeying God and saying, no, God, we know that you've said to do it this way, but we're going to choose to do it our way. And God said, okay. You know, the whole argument about should this or that be legal and and um, should this be right or wrong, we live in a pagan nation, okay? We live in a pagan nation where God himself has given us free choice and said to people, God, give them over to you, you know? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But the reason is because we have left God out, okay? Don't be afraid to say that to people. People in Australia, 80% of people in Australia in the last census said they believe in some type of God. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is or if it's a power or a force or it's nature or it's a being, but 80% of people I can tell you today that you will talk to, not many people go, I don't believe in God. Even if they say it, they kind of, a lot of people do. Some people don't. But most people, you can have a conversation in Australia about God with. Jesus is a little more of a divisive figure, okay, when you get there. But you can say, well, mate, I just think the world has left God out. And we are paying the price for that. And that is why God doesn't want it like that. God made, God hates the way it is. He hates that you're sick in your body. He hates that you're going through this abuse. He hates that people haven't treated you well. You know, it's, it's kind of like normal, no, how do we talk about God normally? Like I, I asked a few Christians this week, what's the reason for the hope that is within you? And they'll prattle off some Christian jargon, you know. And in America that might work, but you can't say that to people in Australia. <laughs> they just go, no, no, no. So it's a matter of being prepared to say what you believe in normal old language that, you know, um, and we have a few evangelists in our church like Cole and Merritt who just are awesome at this. They just, they just talk about it so easy and the rest of us can learn from that too. Um, where are we up to? The state of the world is a mess. You can say, yes, I agree with you. Why does God let that happen? Well, we, we left God out. How, you know, are you mad at God for how the world is? How, how, have you asked him much about how stuff's going? You know, we just leave God out. The idea that there is a God, there is a being, and that he cares about your situation. Really, it's not that much of a stretch for most people. Really. Anyway. One of my friends that said I don't believe in God went on a bender and um, ended up... Uh, passed out on a on a um, meeting strip in the middle of the road in Melbourne near a casino, like big burned off, okay? <laughs> and we were praying for him and he was woken up by a Christian street worker who ministered to him, got him a breakfast, got him back together, got him sober and told him about God and he made a commitment to God. When he came home, he told me about it and since then he's gone back to... I know, I don't believe in God. Mm. But I know in the back of his head, that's there. And it's just one more piece of the puzzle. That guy, just being obedient to God, is putting another chunk into his life. In God, being able, not to condemn, but to reach out to this guy and go, no, I really care about you. That's God's heart for that person. So in this verse, anyway, about... um, In this verse, it starts off before it says always have a reason. It says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. And there's an implication there that in revering Christ as Lord, that we show people a difference in us. And it's a big difference. And then we already talked about our last dot, that the way we treat each other shows people the kingdom. But what's the context of this whole uh, verse? I thought we'll go back and read the whole lot. And in the message version, it's really great uh, interpretation. Right? And it's remember, he's writing to these people who are struggling to live their lives as Christians. And it's just at the end of the letter. And he says, summing up, be agreeable, be sympathetic. Okay, this is what the kingdom is like on the earth. This is how we treat each other. Be compassionate, be humble. That goes for all of you, no exceptions, no retaliation, no sharp-tongued sarcasm. 
instead. I'm so uh, completely guilty of that moment. Because I think it's funny, so I can get away with it. No sharp tongue sarcasm. Instead, bless. That's your job, to bless. You will be a blessing and you also get a blessing. And then he quotes this psalm. Whoever wants to embrace life and see the day fill up with good, here's what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful. Snub evil and cultivate good like a garden. Run after peace for all your worth. God looks on all this with approval, listening and responding well to what he's asked. But he turns his back on those who do evil things. If with heart and soul you are doing good, do you think you can be stopped? Even if you suffer for it, you're still better off. Don't give the opposition a second thought. Through thick and thin, keep your hearts at attention in adoration before Christ your Master. Be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are and always with the utmost courtesy. Keep a clear conscience before God so that when people throw mud at you, none of it will stick. They'll end up realising they're the ones who knew Bach. It's better to suffer for doing good if that's what God wants than to be punished for doing bad. Titus. That's what Christ did definitively, suffered because of others' sins the righteous one for the unrighteous one. He went through it all, was put to death, and then made alive to bring us to God. So it's a bit of a cracker verse. really love it. Yeah. I, you know, people ask me what do I do, oh, what do I do this Sunday? And how do you read my tongue? But this morning, I go to the coffee shop because I want coffee in this morning. Alan said to me, what are you up to today? Are you going to church? I said, yeah, mate. And I mentioned it two weeks ago. He said, you're on kitchen duty? I said, no, nah, not this week. Um, somebody else's. And then he asked a few other questions. And I thought it was great. Yeah. Because yeah. I only mentioned it once a few months, oh, maybe a month ago, when I was getting coffee. He'll be thinking about it, mate. Yeah, yeah. He'll be thinking about it because he will notice the difference in you. Yeah. I know. I know. That's it. Hey. But anyway, this second next one, I already talked about Peter sharing advice from experience because when the chips were down, he was unprepared. He just denied Christ. Hey, shocker. But also on the day of Pentecost, that's when the Spirit of God came falling down and the scoffers and the seekers were going, you know, everyone was speaking in different tongues and people could all hear them in their own languages. So it was a big gathering at Jerusalem where everyone had come. And there's about 20 different groups there. And then the Holy Spirit fell and people were speaking in their own, they could hear them speaking in their own language. And um, they said, oh, they're drunk, you know. And you can see Peter's really changing. He, Peter at that moment stands up and says, no, men and brothers, they're not drunk as you suppose. This is that which was spoken about by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, my spirit will fall on all flesh and your sons and daughters prophesy and your old men or dream dreams and see visions. Pete says, this is that, okay? This, what we're seeing now, is what was spoken about by the prophets. Well, we can't say that unless we're talking to Jewish people. But we can say we are seeing, we are seeing the impact on the world of not, of leaving God out, you know, of leaving God out. That's why this is like this. Now we can give the gospel. So I wanted to think about some questions we might get asked. And um, if you look at the tables, oh, I wanted to talk about your little book, which I don't even have myself, though. Our little book that we got at the start of the year, we should always bring it so we can write stuff um, and, and remember what God has said to us. But there's some pieces of paper and pens around on the tables. And in a minute, we'll pass them out. Questions we might get asked, okay? These are some questions I just put that I've been asked um, that might just come up in the day. So we're going to think about them. We're actually going to think about writing down what we might say. And seriously, this took me, I've been a Christian a long time, 
And this took me some time to come up with how I could say this in a way that wasn't weird or oogie poogie or sounded religious or strange or whatever. You always seem so happy every time I see you, how come? That was that one question I talked about. Next question, and this is like the one um, the lady had in the gym. Oh, you go to church. Why do you, why do, you do that? You know, why do you go to church? Because it's Australia and it's sunny and it's Sunday. Like, what? <laughs> what the? Why aren't you ski? Um, why, why are you going to church for? What would you say? Do you know what you'd say? Yep. What would you say? Maybe. Mm. Life, maybe, yeah, first time. Myself. <laughs> that's, and it, and that's exactly what it is. And it's not yeah. religious, it's not, oh, because Jesus died for my sins, and, you know? Like sometimes I should be a Christian for a while, you just don't know what to say. Next one, and, and lots of you will get this, Jason, well, you really changed lately. It's not real change in you. How come? What's going on? And look, if we've been to a health camp, I went to a health camp um, a week ago. I've always wanted to do this. And I was in a serious rut, okay? Um, I, I learned about resilience in a work seminar. And one of the things for resilience is you have to be exercising. Um, you know, resilience is about when something happens that knocks you off your feet, how long it takes you, how deep you go, and then how long it takes you to recover. And um, eat, sleep, exercise, you've got to have it in there. And I was not having that. So, you know, I had gotten into this down rut. Anyway, I went to this thing. And I'm telling everyone about this thing, okay? I was salt-free, sugar-free, caffeine-free, Alcohol free for a week, exercise for four hours a day, <coughs> ate superfoods, like did all this stuff. When you've got something good in our life, we want to talk. We are we talk about it, don't we? Mm. <laughs> and we've got the answer for the world. We are holding the answer for the world in in jars of clay. We are that. We are God's plan for the planet. Mm. So we want to be talking about that. Yeah. Um, this is a good one I've had. I don't know why smart scientists like you would believe in religion. <laughs> That's an easy one for me because uh, this was from a, a scientist friend of mine and um, I said I am not a fan of religion. This was an argument on a Facebook page. One of my atheist scientist friends got in an argument with one of my right-wing Trump-supporting Christian friends. Okay? <laughs> And it just went, they really, they were like, you're a troll, you are going off at each other. And he said to me, I don't know why he got this on there, and I said, look, I'm not a fan of religion. I don't like organised religion. Most people in Australia don't like organised religion. I am not a religious person. I'm not. I often shock Christians with some of my language and other things. You shock me with some. <laughs> well, you're a, you're a conservative Christian. Um, I'm not a religious person. I am a, I am a follower of the person called Jesus. That's what I said. Yeah. And my atheist friend was like, this one of my other friends got in and was going, oh, blah, blah, blah. and he's like, no, I like Karen's, I like Karen's explanation better. She's a follower of the person called Jesus. So I am, because I've been kicked by the church quite a bit, and the church has a bit of a bad rap, like, you know, suppress Spanish cultures and the Catholic Church and abuse and it's not the best. Sometimes it's better to say, well actually I'm a follower of the person called Jesus. Even Gandhi said, and this is interesting, Gandhi looked at Christianity, he looked right into it, he read the Bible and he said, I like your Christ, but I don't much like your Christians. Interesting, hey. So I'm a follower of the person called Jesus and I want to Follow him and be like him. And I believe that he is God, you know, and all that. That's a good one. Um, this is another good one I've been asked. How did you meet each other? <laughs> this was a cracker. I was down in a casino in Melbourne. Ooh, casinos in Melbourne coming up today. With two of my friends from church. One of, one of them was a bit, bit bouncy, sort of off the derailing sort of bit. But anyway, we went... She was in love with Andy Roddick at the time and the Australian Open was on and she knew he was a gambler and that he would be in the casino, so we all had to go. <laughs> so 
I was sitting in there and one of the girls was a, a Christian who we had a very sheltered life and she'd never seen a poker machine before. She's like, how are you doing? So I mean, we put in a dollar and press this button and it, and it goes, she put one dollar in and it goes cha-ching and she won the minor jackpot. <laughs> She was like, oh, that was really good. And I'm like, it's not always like that. <laughs> it doesn't always happen. <laughs> anyway, we're mucking up. And these, um, these three guys in, you know, sharp looking dudes come up and try to pick us up because Holly's all dressed up because she's hoping to meet Andy Roddick, who, by the way, is upstairs in a private room, which I could have told her anyway. It's 11 o'clock at night. And um, these guys went, how did you meet each other? We looked at each other. And we went, oh, we, we met in church. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and so this guy goes, oh, you're Catholic. And we're like, no, we're not Catholic. We, we go to a different type of church. And he goes, you know, Jesus is Jewish. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, yeah. He was, um, he's from the line of David, actually. And this guy went, really? He's from the line of David, not yeah. And he went, I'm from the line of David. And he was Jewish. So we'd, we'd run into these three Jewish guys. Wow. I know. <laughs> then, man, I can witness to those dudes because I know the whole Old Testament. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, Jesus was from the line of David and, you know, the, the prophet and blah. And we got this huge big conversation. And for him, God was not a person. So he's a liberal Jew who just believes God is a force. Then we haven't talked about that. Well, but why does it call him... God, he, I was just because there's no other word, well, it, you know. I said, oh, I think God's got a personality. And we had quite a theological discussion, which is much easier witnessing for me. But anyway, yeah. So we met in church and it was, you know, I was not prepared hey, for that either. So I want you to pick one of those. Um, has anyone here not been asked one of those questions at some point? No? You never have? So you're now going to get a bit of this paper, take one of those questions, and have a think about, in non-religious language, just what you'd say if someone asked you one of those questions. Why do I go to church on a Sunday? You know? Sometimes church on a Sunday for me and is a lot of hard work, um, which I... And not, you know, it's, it doesn't suit my temperament necessarily. But there's a reason I go, and it means a great deal to me, and I've just got to be able to explain it, and that's it. So the next time I'm, I'm at a fair and someone goes, look, you blah, 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 you just, you just share, you know. So I'm going to give you five minutes. I want you to write one of these questions down or one that's happened to you that you've not known what to say. Just jot a few thoughts about what you might um, think about preparing as an answer, always being ready to give, you know, a reason for the hope that is within you. And um, I'm going to give you five minutes. You can put... We had this conversation about Christianity and religion, and Cole would share stuff that was in the Bible, I'd say, that's just religion. And you go, no, it's Christianity. Okay, no, it's not. Christianity to me was what I perceived as God. And it was that something. It wasn't Jesus. I knew about Jesus and I knew about God through the early stages. And we had a pretty much, in the end, we just, just both agreed to disagree mm -hmm. in, that, in that Christianity to religion. But as I've shared before, you know, 18 months ago, nearly 18 months ago, it was that we talked about that discipleship. And Cole was that person that they could hear, you know. And then about oh and there's that you know, it talks about the broken and, and the and the sick and the healing and uh, I was in I was in the gym about four months ago oh, less, two months ago and the last year there was a girl there, she had a big brace on and just say hello, hello and then through my foot she come and asked me about my foot and we started talking. Then from that conversation come through Christianity. She'd been a Christian all her life, and I spoke about, you know, she hadn't been to church for a while, and I, you know, that's that conversation about church and everything. And um, I seen her the other week, and uh, we spoke again, and she said, oh, I still haven't got back to church. But it's, you know, once again, through me having a broken foot, 
was that conversation to be able to open up to that stuff, you know. But, you know, I love that idea about discipleship. That's where I find myself wanting to do that. This morning was really weird. I was going to pray that I sign my, your name on my heart. That you give me your your words on my lips, so I can share that. You know, I always I do daily devotion and writing, and and in that is to give me someone today that I can share your love. You know, and it's not not the Bible, it's not church, it's just what God Jesus has done for me in my life in a short period of time. But yeah, you know, I love the idea of discipleship. You know, I get that opportunity in. in in my other fellowships that I attend, you know, and I don't hide from Jesus, you know. Before I used to say, oh, I've got a high power, or I've got God, but, you know, God says don't hide, you know, and if, and it said there, I will be mocked and I may be pe- yeah. uh, persecuted, yeah. but, you know, that's cool. Yeah. You know, he'll, I'm better than that, and so I can see the strength in that. So, yeah. That's good. I don't know what you say to you. We sang a song today. I'll just finish on this because I've been given a wind up. Is um, we sang a song that says, "All things work together for my good." Amen. Um, and it, we think, "Wow, that's a stretch." But there is a verse that says that God makes all things work together for the good of them that love Him. He does. Um, and having a broken ankle is a bummer. But look what came out of that. You know, God didn't mean for you to break it. It's random that you fell off a ladder, but he'll take it and make something good mm. out of the heart. Yeah. That's very similar. Jeff, I know that story. Yeah. But um, we go to the same other. Sorry. And I heard him sharing one night about this, and uh, oh, I hated him. I blame God for everything terrible in my life. And uh, I heard him, Jeff, sharing about what he thought to him, the peace. And I actually said to him, um, do you mind if I join you on Sunday or whatever knows? Can I come to church with you? What yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was all... you say? No. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and it's just from him sharing, you know, other, other fellowship. And I heard him saying he'd brought in peace. And I just I thought, let's check, the, let's check this out, you know. Um, I blamed him for everything, but I, don't, I didn't know him. Yeah, you know? I just blamed him, um, and consequently, I've come and then turned into my daughter coming along, and it just passed along the line. So you know, and that story of him, Carl, I, he told me that before. But it just works along the line, you know. And we, sh- he, both he and I, share it every time we have other fellowships. So you know, that's the thing that works. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Thank you. Yeah, I'd say now to that lady, if she asked me a question again and say, you know, I wasn't always a happy person. I was a really angry person. <coughs> as a as a kid, I was a very angry and hurt person. <coughs> but it's my fate, you know. I found I found God one more yeah. Oprah, a free car. <laughs> no, um well see I like the question I get on oh, is is only going to go to church, why do you do that? And I've got one of my friends who I'm actually inviting to the Christmas and God, is she says she's a Christian, but then it's kind of she hates God and doesn't believe it. So it always like makes me happy when she asks me why like, I go to church, because when I started, it was, my dad was going, and I'm like, oh, because the thing was, I've always believed in God, but I've never like actually believed in Christianity. And the first time, I, first like, I came, it was because I was invited to go to the spring loaded afterwards, but they said I had to go to church <laughs> beforehand. So I'm like, it's, it's, it's like, it's coming up. I'll do it, I'll do it. You can kill your kids and stuff. It works. I'll do it with spring loaded and then like, I kept coming back because like, I fell in love with people and the yeah. church and Christianity then. I'm like, that's it, it's a kingdom. We have to have faith in God that the kingdom is a really attractive thing to people. There's no stress with it. We just we just love each other. We just live our life and, and that's it. Yeah. Anyway, let's pray. And um, God, this week, 